My wife and I have been together 30 years, and for 15 of those years, we opened our door and took people in who were homeless. And whether it was family, friends, or strangers, we knew what we needed to do to help others, not just because we had the ability to do so at that point, uh, but because so many people had helped us. When we relocated to Minneapolis from Chicago in 1991, we were homeless and stayed in a hotel a few weeks until we were able to both find and afford a one-bedroom apartment. Our kids were ages seven and two, and if you've read any of the books that I've written or heard any of my testimony, you know that even before that experience in 1991, I personally was homeless in 1980, shortly after my dad passed. I stayed homeless for about a year, lived on the streets of Chicago, uh, sleeping on the benches in Grant Park uh, when the shelters were closed and I couldn't get a bed. And what's so amazing about that experience is that at the time, I was 17 years old and I was working two jobs. Those experiences left me with a pool of compassion that just boils over when I see someone in need. And so making this film uh, is a part of my journey. I first got the idea for making the film while serving coffee and tea and rolls to a group of homeless guys that used to come into my store. In 2013, I built and opened a bookstore cafe in St. Paul, Minnesota called Books and Tea. I'm an author and I've been a regular tea drinker for 40 years. So blending those together to share my love of those two elements, books and tea, with others in a retail setting was very simple. And I'm one who believes that sometimes God does something so awesome in your life that there are no words to describe it. And I know uh, from experience that this is one of those times. So these homeless guys would come into my cafe once or twice a week. And not just because I would give them free coffee and, and rolls, but because it was a place for them to get warm between them going from one road or one highway to another uh, and hold a sign to try and earn some money just to eat that day. And while serving them tea and coffee and rolls one afternoon, it hit me like a ton of bricks that the reality of homelessness is quite different from the perception of homelessness. And people need to know that. People need to know that while yes, they're homeless and their minds are constantly on finding a place to live and a place to stay, but the immediate need of just earning enough money or getting enough money to be able to eat actually overshadows that. People need to know that someone's life can actually morph into a place where we find ourselves in a situation like the one where I met these men along their journey. And they were homeless, yes, but they were not hopeless because they somehow knew internally that their situation and their life would eventually change, but the one thing that stood out to me and the one thing that overshadowed the fact that they were homeless is that they set aside their pride and sat down and wrote signs, whatever was on their hearts that day, write signs that would compel people to give just so they could eat each day. And that's, that's got to be a tough thing to do. It's got to be a, a very difficult thing to do to set aside one's pride to be able to go out and ask somebody for help when you in your heart of hearts know that people generally are not that compassionate. 
So it was an absolutely great thing for me to be able to witness that them being homeless was not their primary focus each and every single day. It was being able to find enough money or earn enough money or get enough money to eat that day and, and that often overshadowed where they were going to lay their head that night. Again, there were many times where they would just come into the cafe just to get warm during the winter months. Now I'm an author who's been blessed to have written many books. I've done dozens of videos and probably twice as many podcasts on various subjects, but this, this project, this documentary hits home with me because of my personal experience as well as the experience of my family and I. And I don't think many people really understand or recognize what it's like for a man to have a family and that family and that man are homeless. So I've made it a point to go, because of my own personal experience, to look in the faces of some of the men who are at shelters and have their family along with them. That's a tough, very tough situation to be in. And because I've been through it, it makes it easier for me to both serve and to sacrifice for families that are or find themselves in a situation where they are homeless. There's so much we take for granted in this life. I think we all can agree on that. There is so much that we take for granted in this life. And my hope is that once the film is released this coming summer 2015, that people will find it in their hearts to, to show it in their places of worship and in their workplaces and even at home. And again, my purpose for making this film is to shine some light on this issue from this unique angle so that people can see it and be moved to do something about it and that God will be glorified. And the film is gaining ground. It's just from the few segments I've shown to reviewers and to award committees, uh, they have responded with much encouragement that this is something that they would like to see up on the big screen. For me, it's part of my ministry, but it doesn't take money to minister. What it takes is a heart of compassion. It's really that simple. What it takes is a heart to want to help others and the compassion to be able to follow through on that. To take just a little of what you have and be able to share that with others, that's what it takes to be able to help other people, is that compassion to be able to follow through on that because we all have a lot of stuff. I mean, we have a lot of stuff. We've, As consumers, we've amassed a lot of things. And there are billions of people on this planet who have amassed a lot of things. And if each one of us would just take one person who's out there homeless or find themselves in a situation temporarily of homelessness and help that person get back up on their feet and get a place to live and a place to stay, whether or not they have a family, if we would be better off as a society if everyone who would see this film would be moved to compassion to be able to go out and do something about it. Street Signs is an absolutely wonderful and marvelous documentary uh, showing homelessness from a unique angle that will open some eyes and it will tug at some heartstrings. Opening some eyes and tugging at some heartstrings is exactly what I'm hoping will be needed to push people into a place of compassion, people and churches into a place of compassion where they just make themselves responsible for one person, just one individual. Because again, there are so many of us who have the ability to do so, that if each one of us stepped up and did one thing to help one person who's homeless, we would easily eliminate this problem. And that simply means that if you have an extra room in your home that you can Instead of renting it out, just give it to somebody who's homeless and help them back up on their feet. Or if you've got the ability to help them 
to pay for a room, you know, for six months to a year, then do so, because that's what's needed out here. You know, landlords, and there are tens of thousands, millions of them, who have the ability to do something like that, and all they have to do is have it a heart, have a heart of compassion to be able to turn that around and to be able to give back instead of always receiving. Again, my wife and I and our family opened our doors for 15 straight years uh, to family and to friends and to strangers when they found themselves in a position of homelessness. And telling our story is something I plan to do for the rest of my life because I find that it's serving and has served to encourage people when they find themselves in this position. Um, it encourages them that their lives and their situation can and will eventually change. And I think if I had to sum it all up, that really would be the bottom line to answering the question of why I'm making this film.